This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. This one has to do with marketing. It turns out that in startups, and all the ones I've been associated with, either when we were starting up Symantec uh, or uh, Slate or when I've been a board member at ones, you know, every, everybody's really obsessed with getting the product done, as they should be, or the service. I mean, you know, we're turning the technology into something useful. No, no question. that got to happen. R&D is very, very important. It's a necessary condition. It's not sufficient. Everybody's uh, obsessed about sales because we've got to generate some sort of revenue right away. And you, you would want them to be that way. I mean, sales is really important. What gets lost out of the, uh, the picture a lot of times is um, this notion of marketing, which you'll learn about. If you went to business school, there'll be marketing classes. We have a great marketing class here in the engineering school taught by an, a whole team of people, uh, Tom and Donna and so on. And, but marketing in, in the real world is just sort of seen as kind of, uh, you know, the back seat, you know. Uh, the ugly duckling, and that could be as far from the truth as what really, really happens when in successful companies. Uh, they do an amazing job of figuring out how we're going to compete, who we're going to sell stuff to exactly, who's, who's really are we serving, and how we're going to partner in order to do that. And so um, a friend of all of ours in this room, because he's a Stanford grad, he's an English major, I hope you've seen him speak in this room before, Jeff Moore, popularized this model which most of us who teach this stuff, you know, absolutely love. How many of you have seen this model called crossing the chasm before? It goes along this notion that everything that's radical, every innovation that's really a brave new world, uh, that really changes the game, um, goes through an, a, a set of time before it gets adopted. Everything. I mean, even digital music players. If I ask you now, how many of you have an iPod or a digital music player? You say, sure, I got one. If I'd asked you that question two years ago, it wouldn't be the same. If I asked you, two, you know, four years ago, it wouldn't have been uh, many at all. Because only at, you know, four years ago uh, did people in this area, the early adopters, have that. Well, it turns out everybody thought that technologies just got adopted really smoothly. But they don't. There's this chasm. You see that break between sort of the early market and, the, and sort of the mainstream market? where wealth and success really is, there's a break there. So this fellow developed a method and a, and a way of talking about how to get across there with all kinds of metaphors of, of uh, bowling alley, tornado, and Main Street. I guess my point is this, is what I've noticed over and over is that partnering is one of the keys to that. And I had a chance in the 90s to see uh, a uh, bunch of people, a bunch of entrepreneurs, range a partnership uh, with another company that people said you could not partner with that just blew me away. And I got to watch it really closely because I was a board member from the, for the whole get-go. The company was in Seattle. It was called Visio, V-I-S-I-O. It's now a product line at Microsoft, but just suspend that for a minute. It was, it was a graphic software package, uh, and it was a separate company for 10 years all the way through uh, the 90s. And uh, it ran on, only on Windows, and it was a, a drawing package and flow charting and org charts and things like that. Well, they did an, an amazing job of getting Microsoft, who back in, if you don't think Microsoft is well-liked now, you should have seen them in the 90s. That was when they were being sued by the government, you know, and all this kind of stuff for being monopolistic. So nobody wanted to work with Microsoft because they said, you know, those ruthless uh, folks, they'll, they'll never be able to, just never create a situation where it's one plus one equals three. Well, it was amazing to watch this, these folks from Visio pull that off and, and do great sales uh, promotions together, do great marketing uh, campaigns together. Now, it turned out after 10 years of, of, uh, of dating, they actually got married. The relationship went to another level, and Microsoft bought them. Uh, but even during the period, it wasn't about, hey, let's do this so we get bought by Microsoft someday. It was, look, partnerships are key. The way to get across that chasm we need to partner with Microsoft, we're going to make it work. The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu.